Okay. We sure did, thank you. You ride into town every day? Yeah, a couple times. Couple times. So who's coming out here Monday? Who'd you say? CBS in the early morning America. Uh, I don't know what they call it. Okay. Uh, Bryant, someone. Anyways, I'm excited about that. <laughs> and you'll be on national television? Yes, yes, CBS. Good morning America, I think it is. So what are you hoping to do with, with more um, attention? Well, I'll... Turn How will that all, help you? Yeah, I'll turn it all over to God. Okay. And I'll say to everybody in the whole world, God loves you. Yes. And a lot of people say, we know that, but maybe we can know it better. <laughs> when did you get the idea for this? It was in 1967. And I remember the spot. Uh, you want to hear it? Yes, I do. Okay, it takes a couple minutes. That's okay. I was, I was at my sister's house in uh, Lemon Grove, California in 1967. And uh, all of a sudden, one day, I started saying by myself, Jesus, I'm a sinner, please come into my heart. I said that about 10 times all by myself and tears came to my eyes. And I said, well, I'm a, all alone with Jesus and it's not embarrassing. I'm gonna say it for about a half hour. And man, I ended up crying and, and, and I've loved God and Jesus and the Bible ever since. And I tried to explain this to all the churches. Jesus, all you, in Acts 2.38, the, one of the first scriptures I read was repent to Jesus Christ and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and I figured wow I hit the nail right on the head and I never loved God or Jesus before that day but boy did that get my attitude changed and I wanted to put God his love to the world in 1970 I saw a hot air balloon in Burlington Vermont fly over and it said Budweiser of course or something on it and people were bringing their kids out by the hundreds. Daddy, what's that balloon say? Mama, what's that balloon say? And I looked up at God Almighty way back in 1971 about. And I says, God, I want a hot air balloon. It says, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Please come into my heart on it. And I prayed for 10 years. And nobody would help me. Churches wouldn't help me. They've all got their way. And I broke down in Nebraska in 1980. And one friend that didn't even go to church, says, all you talk about is a hot air balloon, and you're my friend, so I'll help you build one. In four years, I sold in Nebraska 
a hot air balloon that said, Jesus, I'm a sinner, please come into my heart on it. And it was 200 feet high. It was 10 stories high. And I had God is love on it with a cross shaped something like my mountain. To make a long story short, in 1984 or 85, it rotted out on me right here. And I looked up and I says, God, I've been trying to work for you for 14 years and all I've got is a rotted out balloon and three or four dollars to my name and a half a bag of cement. And I says, God, I'll stay here one week and make a little eight foot one. And that was almost 16 years ago. And uh, I can tell you honestly, I, I just think God had a better plan. My plan is so puny and so small that it's embarrassing. So I just let God do the planning and God does the decorating and I just sit back and tell him I don't know what I'm doing. No plan at all. Whenever I have a plan it falls apart so I just do it. And I'm really excited about it. People are really liking this all over the world it seems like. There's a, lo a lonely planet organization in Europe that's coming down and most people heard about it. 30 million people in January is going to see the mountain. And six of them came down from Europe last summer. And they said they are going to put it on. Now it's getting on CBS Monday. And uh, I'm really excited about putting God is love to this world. I, I like to talk about the freedom of the United States of America. Man, I didn't have any right to be here for 15 years. But because of freedom and people left me alone, look what happened. Thank God for that. And uh, I brag about the freedom of the United States of America. I never could have done that if they came down with rules and regulations. They just let me do my thing. And I'm awful happy about it. And I'm happy about California. And this only takes a minute, but it, it'll get right to the point. A lawyer told me that anybody with money can take the mountain down in the future, and I'm against the law. The only way to preserve it is through the Senate of the United States of America. And they put Rebecca Hofberg in charge of national monuments in Baltimore, Maryland Museum. And she wrote me a draft telling me to get in touch with Barbara Boxer and turn this into a Senate-controlled national monument. And then in 190 years from now, your great-great-great-grandkids can look at it. I got so excited about this, I went down and got 5,000 copies of this about eight months ago. And I've given off 1,000 copies. And two young kids in Canada said on the web, we Canadians like that mountain, you better preserve it. And I'm giving, I'm giving these out and people are writing in. Three months ago, I wrote to every senator in the country and I sent them three postcards and told them I, every letter was a little bit different and I never heard from any of them. <clears throat> but I believe that uh, this is gonna cause a commotion to the good. And it's just about people helping. Excuse me for talking so much, but <laughs> you can shut me up anytime you want to. This is good. But I'm really wow. excited about it. Where are you from originally? Uh, Vermont. Vermont. Born in 1931 in Burlington, Vermont. Okay. And for about 45 years of my life, I was cold every winter. So I really love California and the sunshine. Is that why you came to California for the weather? Well, kind of, yes. In the... Uh, I just happened to end up here because I think this is the best place in the whole country to build a, a monument like this. The whole mountain is solid clay, so it doesn't cost anything. Farmers have old bales of hay by the hundreds that they want to give me. So people give me hay, people give me old paint, and the mountain give me the clay. And, uh, and I've got the freedom of the thing, so I can do it. Now, has, has anybody from the state of California or any government officials ever told you you're going to have to get off the land? Yes, kind of. Uh, in 1994, it cost Sacramento $160,000 to put it in a toxic dump. Mm. And the environmentalist said I was contaminating the people in a toxic nightmare. <laughs> but uh, the museums and the people thought different. And thank God for the United States. You know, people still run the United States of America. And so many museums and beautiful artists got on my side. Philadelphia, uh, Exquire, San Diego Union, Chicago Tribune, LA Times, they all told them to leave me alone. And you know, because of the freedom of the thing in people, for six years, they positively left me alone and I can just do what I want to do. So I brag about that. I brag about the, the freedom of this country. How do you, how do you promote this? Like you two, I don't know if you've got cameras, mm -hmm. so maybe you can 
promote it a little no, bit. No, we can, sure. <laughs> so I let them, I let the camera people do their thing and the newspaper, they write beautiful articles mm -hmm. about it and uh, they let me build them out. So I think it's a beautiful team. <laughs> I seem to be ending up with the best deal, it seems like. Did you notice I had a lot of paint out there? Oh, yes, over on the side. Yeah, I've been trying to put on 20 and 30 gallons a day and I can't keep up with wow. it. Because people see the mountain, they like it, they bring me their own paint. I give them postcards and tell them I love them and they love me. and It's just a beautiful story. I'm really excited. I Good. guess Do you the post offices that deliver you mail here? or Yes, yeah, I got a post office box I okay. check every day. And outside of that, that's about my... I'm not very good with the telephone anymore, so I just, uh, I just like to work on the mountain. <laughs> if my truck breaks down, I don't even want to work on it anymore. I just pump my bicycle and work on the mountain. And uh, I really don't consider myself an artist yet, but I'm working hard to be one. I'd like to really be one. And I work at it. Did you two climb up the mountain? No. Would no. you like to? Sure. I'll wait for you. Go ahead. Sure okay. mountain. I'll follow it. Yes, my uh, sister from Rhode Island was here just last week. Really? Yeah. <laughs> They've been here before. Well, people want to see the donations, how they the P.O. box and use yeah. that for the minute. Once in a great while I do that. Yeah. Usually it's donations with paint and uh, compliments. And yeah. Boy, my enthusiasm is right up to 100. It is. How old are you again? 68. 68. You're still a young man. That's good. Yeah, I, yeah, you I like lot, that. you got a lot more work to do. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is the yellow brick road? Yeah. You don't have to follow it. Uh, I want those two waterfalls in blue. This is going to be an ocean in blue. When wow. I get another 300 gallons of blue paint. And there's going to be a boat in the waves. There's probably... 30 wheelbarrow folds of adobe in each wave. Mm. And I got a little island out there in the blue. Oh, that's nice. How many years ago was it Huell was here, do you think? Was it in the 80s? Was it in the early 90s? Oh, it was uh, earlier than that. No, no, it was later than that. Later than I'd that? Four About four years but ago. He's helped me an awesome. Has he? Boy, he's played that thing over again. Really? Yes. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. I've heard about it, but I haven't seen it. It's been I can't say how many times. Yeah. I'd say 40 or 50 or 30. Wow. Well, that's <laughs> For the first eight years, I could never get enough paint. I had to go to the dump and scrounge around and get all the paint they threw away. Then we'll continue up to the yellow stage. Okay. Believe it or not, the mountain is all in place. It's the best adobe in the whole world. And uh, I made this thing because they gave me the hay and the mountain gave me the hay. And these are kitty cat cans. I had thousands of these kitty cat cans. And uh, I fill the kitty cat cans full of mud or clay and make flowers. And boy, I got hundreds and hundreds of them. I got carried away with this project. <laughs> I'd like to show you a thing that made 60 bales of hay. 60 bales of hay. Wow, this is great. How long did you start doing this? Not very long. No. Off and on a year and a half. Wow. Now, some days I'd only work on it 20 minutes. And uh, it, it goes real fast because you can mix the adobe and wheelbarrow and put a layer on and put the bale on it. And you can line it up like brick. And every time you put a bale on, you cover a lot of area. <laughs> Seems like. That's incredible. This was after you had the mountain painted? You came in here to do this? What's that? Did you paint the, out, the, the outside first and you did this last? No, kind of. No? Uh, I'm so spoiled. I just wake up in the morning and whatever I feel like doing, I do. And if it doesn't seem like uh, it's in... Uh, I, I just do exactly what I feel like doing. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And sometimes I'd be painting on the outside, and in the afternoon I'd be painting the mountain up, and the next day I'd be mixing adobe for something else. Wow. <laughs> so it's awful uh, fun going. My old age is getting, I'm getting happy with my old age. 
<laughs> I think good gets better. And this is kind of kind of hard to believe. I'm uh, I'm making a a, doc, a a duplicate of that hot air balloon that I made. And it's 10 stories high, so it's going to shoot up over that mountain 100 foot wide if I get another 2,000 bales of hay. Wow. And without any plans at all, I put tractor tires and truck tires, and it's going to look like a redwood tree. And that's going to hold up every bale. Ever heard of such a thing? Never heard of it. That's great. That's but incredible. it seems to be developing. Uh, and I had no plan on this whatsoever. But you can see the uh, big stems holding the bales in there. Yes. Man, that's going to really be different, isn't it? That's incredible. So, in all those bales, I have a big long uh, ladder and I have to carry each bale up, up the ladder and put it in there. But isn't, I never heard of such a thing. No. But, uh, you know, people are not laughing at me anymore at all. More stems going up to each bale, that's going to look like a, and all I got to do is paint it redwood uh, stain. And it'll look like a redwood tree in there. Yes, I do. And then when I paint this yellow, you see, it'll cover up the uh, straw. It will. And yes. it'll, it keeps it from cracking. Wow. I, I have fun fixing the cracks. Like that there was the worst cracks in the whole place. I mean, doesn't it feel like it's hollow? It doesn't have a, you know, it doesn't have a rock solid feel to it. I think it's because really this may be funny, but that latex paint is rubberized and you get a lot of flexibility with it. Yeah, and maybe. that's why it don't crack. Wow. I think. That's maybe. true. Well. It's getting better. We can go down the roadway, it's easy. But it's a pretty nice backyard there. Pretty nice backyard. <laughs> God is love. If you want proof of it, come out here. You call this Salvation Mountain? It's been called, Salvation Mountain is what people called it. What do you call it? I call it God is Love Mountain. God is Love Mountain. <laughs> in, the, in some of the magazines, it was Magic Mountain. Right. Uh, Wow. Yeah. But I, I like Salvation Mountain. It uh, seems to be what people like. And I let everybody draw their own conclusions. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's why people love me so much. Uh, I have no church name on this at all. Keep churches out. Just love God head on. Love God only. So you're not preaching any creed no, or no, you love God denomination. Head on. No. It doesn't matter if you're a Catholic, a Protestant. No. Just love God head on. Love God. And I see, I get very strict with this. Yeah. Because I've had a lot of big churches that want to grab me. Really? Put their thing on you. No, I'll say you love God head on. Yeah. That's I think that's why people love me so much. I, it's God. God is love, and, and you know, love is the strongest force in this whole world, really. Yes, it is. And uh, I get so excited talking about it because I never thought this mountain would go good at all. That first eight years, mm. it was a bomber. <laughs> Nobody would. So do you, do you think it's important for anyone to read and study the Bible or can they just say God is love and that's all you just need? Honest to God, and this is scriptural. Okay. Acts 2.38, the Bible says, repent to Jesus Christ for the remissions of sin and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's all we have to do. Repent to Jesus Christ. 
1967, all by myself, I was saying, Jesus, I'm a sinner, please come into my heart. Isn't that a form of repentance? Yes, it is. And man, I tried to explain this to every church in the world and it got nowhere. <laughs> so, but the Bible does say, repent to Jesus and be saved. Yes. And I've had 150,000 postcards of this with the sinner's prayer on it. Really? The first thing I do is put the sinner's prayer on both sides of my trunk. But I want to do it in a nice way where people love me. Yes. And I'll say, hey, let's just love each other. I had one church tell me uh, something like, well, you don't even come to our church and listen to us. And I'll say, well, I really love your church, and I love the church down the road, and I love every church in the world. Then I got carried away, and I said, I love everybody that don't go to church. Can't we just love everybody? And I went on and on and on, and pretty soon they all left me alone. <laughs> but I love them. Okay. That breeze feels pretty nice up here, doesn't it? Have any, have any church people ever come out here? Have you ever had a priest out here? Have you ever had a, uh, um, an, a minister or a uh, congregation? Probably. Yes. Yeah? Have you ever had anybody come out here and be unhappy with what you're doing? Have you ever, has there ever been any criticism of what you're doing? Very, very few. I would say if there's a, I, I don't want to estimate high or low, I have no idea. Say of the 100,000 people that came up, I don't think there's two of them that, that criticized. They just, one time I had a, probably a 300 pound gorilla of a great big giant of a man. He was cussing God and drunker than a who. And he looked me in the face and boy, he says, I love that mountain a lot. I really love that mountain. And he staggered off. So I hollered at him and says, God bless you, I love you too. But that's about the, that's about the only controversy there is. I feel that, that that big God is love. People don't want to fight that. They just do. Uh, <laughs> now, when it gets really hot out here, where do you stay? In, uh, underneath my truck. Underneath your truck. From a 10 o'clock to the church. It's the only shade there is. Then it starts shading the truck. <laughs> How hot do you think it gets? What's your hottest day out here? Uh, I believe, without exaggerating, the hottest day I remember in 16 years was 123. Oh my God. And uh, usually it hovers around 111 to 17, with the humidity down a little bit. Uh, Does it get pretty cold in the winter as well? No, I, th I think in the winter, in the fall, winter, and spring, nine months of the year, this is the best climate in the whole country. I really believe that. And uh, I've had a lot of cameras uh, kind of look at me with sympathy. Oh, you poor thing staying out here with electricity. And do you know what I tell them? I'm not here because I have to be. I'm here because I want to be. I'm here because my happiness is right here. And uh, they agree with me that it's peaceful and quiet. Yes. <laughs> Some of the biggest thrills I have is when people come up with a van and usually they don't shut their engine off because they're in a hurry. Right, Everybody's right. in a hurry. Right, I mean, right. you have to be in a hurry. Right. And they'll shut their motor off and six or eight kids will be in there and two hours later they'll apologize for being here so long. <laughs> and I'll say, hey, I'm glad that you're comfortable. That's what I made it for. But a lot of people say they feel good and peaceful up here. Oh, yeah. And I'll tell you, God is so big. If he anoints us, whoa, <laughs> wouldn't that be beautiful?
hardly any. Pretty amazing. You don't mind if I take another minute of your time no, and show please. you some... Uh, Oh, I was excited to see this. Hmm. How, how, when was this book printed? A couple years ago. A couple years ago? Yeah. And uh, now it's gotten all, it's gotten into all these books and magazines. I got, a whole I got press. on the cover of that one. Oh, wow. <laughs> I got excited about this going so good. Here's a book they made in New York City with lost. They got three pages of me in there. Whoa, Nowhere USA. Yeah, and they got me on a tape. Every one of these books sold worldwide, there's a tape. And I was telling the ministers about Acts 238. And they put it on the tape. <laughs> <laughs> so. I see you, a vegetarian beans. Are you a vegetarian? No, but I, I eat a lot of uh, apples and oranges and plums and pears. Sometimes I think I'm a bigger glutton than I am a... Here's, here's that worldwide book that went in the Library of Congress. Every page and every word is on the mountain. Wow. Well, show me the name of that book again. There's your picture. It's The Art of Leonard Knight. The Art of Leonard Knight. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 